All right, welcome everybody to a brand new week. Today we're going to be talking about how to use GitHub. So you're working on a partnered project right now, and partnered projects are a great opportunity to learn how to use GitHub. GitHub is sort of the industry standard right now on uh, what's called uh, source control or version control software, where basically every time you update your source code, you, you push it to GitHub, and they record the new version, and they record all the old versions too. So if you ever break anything, then you can always revert back to an old version, and it never loses uh, any of the history of your source code unless uh, you tell it to, which happens occasionally. Uh, GitHub is not the easiest software to use in the world. I actually prefer, like if I could pick a different thing to be the uh, industry standard, I would, um, but you know, that's sort of water into the bridge uh, now. So um, it is, it is in fact the, the de facto standard. So let's uh, go over to GitHub. Uh, all of you are gonna be working on groups. All of you have to work on a group. If you're not in a group, make sure you post into CSI 40. We'll get you put into a group. I know there was one group. I haven't grouped up yet, but you guys will be grouped up. Don't worry. So uh, GitHub is uh, Git, and Git is a command line tool that uh, interfaces with GitHub and doesn't have to be GitHub. It can just be done locally too. But um, so it looks something like this, like git, and it's just a command line command, and there's all sorts of different things you can do with it. And um, this was originally written by Linus Torvalds for the development of a source code, uh, source repository, source code repository versioning system for the uh, Linux kernel. And um, as such, it's not it's not necessarily user friendly, so we're going to do a tutorial to show you kind of how this is going to work. So let's say that Mincarelli is my partner on the RPG 40 assignment. Okay, so I'm going to walk you step by step on how um, we can um, work together on it. Now, there's other alternatives you can do. For example, you can use Replit. Um, I posted the link on Replit Multiplayer, I think it's called. Um, you can use Replit Multiplayer, which is a, um, it's kind of like Google Docs, like you can all edit the code at the same time. Uh, it works pretty well. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, the downside to it is usually having multiple people editing the same code at the same time actually doesn't work well because like, you know, like one person's halfway in the middle of a line, you try compiling it and like they're still typing a line, right? And, and so it's kind of, yeah. I mean, it's good if you're all like streaming together and like you're taking turns typing and things like that. Um, but like, it's like that NCIS scene where like there's like um, two idiots, one keyboard. If you guys are familiar with this, where like you know you have you have two people typing on the keyboard at the same time. Let's see. Show the keyboard. Show the keyboard. There you go. You have two people typing on it at the same time. Yeah, it just doesn't work very well, right? Uh, you can also use VS Code. VS Code has a code sharing feature where you can edit code collaboratively. Um, honestly, though, I think learning GitHub is the right thing to do. Okay, so let's get cracking on it. So the first thing you need to do is make an account on GitHub, and just do this. And I am gonna go and make a new repository. So you're gonna have to log in, you're gonna have to make an account, log in, and then I'm gonna make a new repository. And the new repository is gonna be called um, um, RPG 40. Okay. Uh, test, delete me. Okay. I'm gonna make this a public repo, and that means anybody in the world can see it. And the reason why this is a good idea for you is because uh, ultimately when you apply for a job, uh, get your GitHub uh, account is often looked at by potential employers. So one of the things like it's very common on people's resumes is that they'll have like their job experience, their college experience, and then like a link to their GitHub. And then people, and you should probably explain what kinds of things are on there. And then people will go and check it out and see what kind of code you write and, and stuff like that. And so making, having a, a history of like public repositories is, is good for your long-term success. Uh, you can make it private. Um, anytime you do homework, not homework, not this, but like actual homework, please make it private because otherwise what's gonna happen 
is that anybody in the class could be Googling, like, how do I do, you know, Battleship in CSI 40? And it will turn up your repository and they can copy your code. And then when I run the plagiarism detection software, guess what? You plagiarized. And you're like, what? I didn't plagiarize. Well, you put up the code publicly visible and somebody copied from you, so you did. Right? And so uh, anytime you're solving, like, one of the normal homework assignments, make it private. Otherwise, you're essentially cheating. Uh, we'll start with the readme file, get ignore template for C++. And why did that not click? C++, thank you. License, you want to pick GPL, uh, and then we're going to create the repository. And so create some files here and blank readme file. I'm just going to put in some, hi, this is a blank readme file. I'm going to connect the changes and then that updates the file in real time. Now I'm going to add Mincarelli as a contributor to the thing. Mincarelli, are you here? You ready for this? Um, there is GitHub student edition. Yeah, there is, but I, I've got issues actually with how like GitHub classroom and things like that are set up. So um, I'm, I, I have issues with GitHub as well. So, okay. So I'm going to go over to settings and we go to collaborators and then I'm going to type in, uh, confirm access, okay. Um, then I am going to add a person. And so uh, what is your username? Uh, I can, here, I'll take this off the recording, so I'm not gonna dox you. So either message me or put it on Discord. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in his username here and hit add collaborator. So whenever you're ready, it's like A2X something, something, something. Uh, yeah, okay, that works. There, there. Invite collaborator, add him to the repository. Okay, so now, um, here you go. You can see I have added McCrelly as a collaborator. Then he's going to go on to his GitHub account, log in, and he's going to get a notification up here that he has been invited to a repository. Okay? So under your notifications here, um, he will, he will see that. Okay. And then when I come back in here, if I refresh, it's still waiting on you, McCrelly. Okay. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So um, if you have currently an RPG 40 assignment uh, folder, you're going to want to move it out of the way. Uh, so like move RPG 40 to like uh, whatever. Uh, I don't have one, but let's just say that happened. Then I'm going to do this, get clone RPG 40. Uh, yeah, sorry. Code. I'm going to go back to the code here, click on code here and get the hyperlink, copy there. Come over here and I'm going to get clone shift insert there. And then it creates a new directory and it downloads all the source code into it. So I'm going to CD into RPG 40 and there we are. Um, so if I edit the readme file, you'll see, hi, this is a blank readme file. Remember, I typed that a second ago. So when you clone it, it downloads it. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, I'm just going to copy the files from my uh, other RPG directory into here. So I'm going to copy uh, CSI homework RPG 40 into here. I'm going to get add all, and then I'm going to get commit m initial commit, and then I'm going to do a git push. So git add tells git which files you wish to upload to the server, and the, uh, oh lord, so this is something you talk about. So git add dot adds everything in the current directory to be uploaded to the server. Git commit says, okay, we're gonna add a, we're, we're gonna commit them to the server and I'm gonna leave a note saying what changes did I make? This is not a very good note, but whatever. Um, and then I do a git push and git push will upload them all into the repository. So you then have to type in your username and you have to type in your password. And as always the git authentication thing is, has forgotten my credentials. 
So what I have to do is I have to go over into GitHub and scroll down and go to developer settings. Under This is under settings. Here, let me start over. So under your, your username, go to settings here. Scroll down to developer settings here. And because you can't type in your password, it's really frustrating. They, they eliminated the ability to uh, use password authentication from the command line. It's, in my opinion, not a great change. So I'm going to create a personal access token, which is the password that you're going to type in there. I'm going to generate a new token. Uh, no, it is going to be like, uh, delete me or something. Expiration will be in seven days. Uh, full control. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to select all these things here. Um, you can you can generate paths that have limited um, limited rights, but I'm just going to grant this all to myself here. And generate token. And uh, I quickly moved it off the screen so you guys can't see it. Copy and come over here and paste it. Okay, it doesn't appear over here. Um, now that personal access token only appears once ever. So on my web browser over here, the personal access token is now on the screen. Once I close the screen, I cannot access that again. So I'm gonna need to uh, open up Notepad and like paste my personal access token into there. And so now when I close the browser, snap, it's gone forever. The only place that there's a copy of that is in my notepad, which is highly secure. Good job, GitHub. It's great having your password having to be written down in a notepad somewhere. Because you can save it into the Git, there's a Git credentialing system. It will save your credentials on the command line. And as you can see, it doesn't remember your password half the time. So cool. Um, so there we go. Anyway, so that's our workflow. So the first thing you do is you create the repository. That only happens once. You set up your collaborators. That only happens once. And then you get clone to download the, uh, the repo like this. And uh, all the collaborators are going to do this. So Mincrelli has done that uh, at his house, right, Mincrelli? You accepted the invite. Cool. So he's now listed as a collaborator on it. Then uh, the workflow is this. Basically, I can, edit, uh, I can edit a file. So if I go to vim readme and uh, readme, readme md, that's the one for GitHub. Uh, I could be like, uh, uh, this is just a live demo between Kearney and Mincrelli. Uh, feel free to delete whenever you want. Okay. So that's, that's an update I've made. Okay. And now what I can do is I can say get add readme.md. So that says I want that file to go up. Um, get commit dash m um, updated description and readme.md, and then I can go get push, and now the file has been shot up into the atmosphere. And if we go over to my uh, repo here, uh, do, 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 do. Are you my repos? Okay, it's hidden by my face. <laughs> all right, so under under your account here, uh, you click on your repositories and it shows all of your repositories. So here's RPG forty. Click on that, and then it shows all of the different files. Um, remember, I copied all the files from the standard RPG forty directory into here. It's a good starting point, and you'll see that the um, the description has now updated with what I said there. Now, Mincarelli is going to now, um, let's say, edit main.cc. So you can click on main.cc from the website and see all the stuff in here. So Mincarelli, go ahead and like fill out the uh, the boilerplate, like uh, you know, hashtag include IO stream and main, see out hello world, all that kind of stuff. And I'll pause the recording because I think my coffee just arrived, and it'll give Mincarelli a chance to um, edit the file. And then what he's going to do is he's going to go through the same three steps. So the workflow is the workflow is this. You make your changes, edit the code, test it, etc. 
when it's ready to be uploaded, you do a get add dot, or you can pick or pick individual files to upload. Uh, get commit dash m uh, description of what you did for git push and um, you will need your username and personal access token right. then the other person does a git pull which downloads So then Crowley's going to do a git pull, and then it's going to get the updated readme.md. Now he's going to uh, work on main.cc. And while I'm going to go grab my coffee, he's going to go and do those steps. So he's going to uh, edit the file, compile it, test it. OK, it's good to go. Then he's going to do git add, git commit, git push, and then it'll go up onto GitHub. And then when I'm ready to get the, the changes, I do a git pull, and it comes to me. And this allows multiple people to be working on the code at the same time. Does it allow two people to be working on the same file at the same time? Not really, kind of, maybe, sort of. You get what's called a merge conflict and it's uh, annoying. So it's best, um, if you're working on different functions at the same time, uh, Git can probably merge them successfully. Uh, if you're working on the same section of code at the same time, uh, you're gonna get a nasty merge conflict and so don't do that. So it, this still doesn't let you get away from uh, you know, if you want to be working on the same code at the same time, use Replit, use um, uh, VS Code's uh, code sharing, uh, collaborative code sharing. Um, there's multi-user Vim, uh, Google Docs if you have to, um, to edit code simultaneously. So if you're working on the same thing at the same time, uh, this isn't the right solution, but this is good when people are working on different documents at the same time, or if one person works on the file at one point in time and then they upload the changes, then people download it and work on it themselves. Okay, so you still have to communicate with your friends. Let me pause, and I will be right back. All right, so let's switch over to Mincurly's view here. So I'm gonna watch Mincurly's stream. Let's pop this out Just here. And so uh, before you do that, uh, go back uh, one second, go edit, edit main.cc. Okay, so he just created uh, some code, out of stream. Okay, he's got main, all right. Kearney and Mincurly. Okay, go ahead and save it. Okay. And then compile the code, make sure it works. Okay. Then uh, git add. Uh, you only worked on main.cc, so just do that. Yep. Uh -huh. And then do a git commit. So having a good git commit description is considered practice. And again, this is industry standard, like for better or worse, uh, Git and GitHub are basically the de facto standard for code repositories, source code control, version control, things like that. So he does the git add, git commit, git push, types in his username. Now he's probably looking for his past uh, personal access token. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that ready, my bad. Do you have, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk in the meantime. Um, <laughs> yeah, git commit dash m fix some things. Right, exactly. Uh, version next for, uh, yeah, bug fixes, minor bug fixes. <laughs> so, um, so basically what this project we're, we're doing, the RPG project is trying to really teach you is how to work in groups in computer science because computer science is inherently social, which seems weird because computer science people have a, um, people have a uh, reputation for being antisocial, right? Like we're supposed to just work in a dark, dimly lit basement and not talk to people, right? But, you know, even when I was, even when I was just an independent contractor working, doing work with people all over the country, like I still had to talk with my clients, you know, and if I, and if I screwed that up, you know, like if I, if I put my foot in my mouth, like I was working with these historians and, and they're like, um, yeah, we're thinking about working with Gilder Lehrman. I'm like, who's Gilder Lehrman? I've never, I don't know. And they're like, uh, you know, maybe you're not the right person for this job. You know, and they essentially fired me on the spot. I, it, it wasn't like I was working for them yet. We were just kind of like talking to see like if I could work with them and stuff like that. 
And they basically decided they wanted somebody who knew who Gilder Lehrman was. Yeah. Like, does anyone in chat know who Gilder Lehrman is? Apparently they're pretty important. I don't know. Like, if you don't know who they are. Hey, yeah, what's up? Can I finish it? I saw it, yeah. I'm, I'm watching the stream right now. Right. There you go. So, if you don't know who that is, like, you know, it's, can't work with you. <laughs> Gilder Lehrman. Found in 1994, they do history stuff. I don't know. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you watch, um, if you watch, um, like people in like thing companies working, like they're, they're always like coding. They've got their Slack channel open on the side or, or discord, hopefully nowadays. And basically they're coding and they're working and they're doing nerd stuff. But at the same time, like everyone's got their chat channel and they're all communicating with each other constantly. And that's that's something that is hard for students a lot of times to grasp, which is that, yeah, computer science is social. Like there's not one person at Microsoft. There's lots of people at Microsoft. You know what I mean? Like there's not one person responsible for like Windows or, or Word. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people and they have to work collaboratively with each other. And they're in teams of like five-ish, seven-ish you know, somewhere in that range. And they typically have a, a project lead and the project leads talk with other project leads. They coordinate together. And there's all sorts of upstream and downstream and sideways communications. And being able to work collaboratively and be able to, you know, know how to use tools like GitHub are essential. This is actually probably the most important lecture you're going to get all semester because GitHub is just everywhere these days. Okay, so he has uploaded, stuck with Microsoft Teams and Slack, yeah. Right, so Bell is a professional programmer. He, he was at uh, Columbus Community College for two years. He went on to CSUMB for two more years and is now working professionally in Texas. And so uh, Mr. Bell on chat just said, I'm stuck using Microsoft Teams and Slack. It's the, this is my happy face. Okay, so now that Min Crowley has done that, I can do a git pull, okay? And bloop, and now if I open up main.cc, there it is, there's all this code, cool. Okay, so that's basically the workflow, okay? So I'm gonna now update it. I'm gonna have uh, this thing here, like, I don't know, for um, auto reference, for every row in the map, we're gonna be going over this in the second half of the lecture today. For every row in the map, for every uh, character by reference, for every uh, column in the row, for every row on the map, for every column in the row, set that column to be star. I'm just gonna make a giant map full of stars. Or some like Sagan quote or something, billions and billions of stars. And then, uh, you know, I'll just print it out or something. Okay. Oops. Uh, So we're going to make it, this is what we're going to cover in the second half of the lecture, but I'm going to make a five by five uh, array and then I'm going to print out the thing with a little tab afterwards and a new line. I'm going to compile it, make sure the code works. So I'm just initializing the, the map to like a five by five map of stars. Maybe a star is like a wall or something, I don't know. And then I'm going to do git add main.cc, git commit message. Uh, initialize the map to a five by five map of walls. Get push. And now we'll switch over to Mancarelli. Okay, so Mancarelli starts streaming again, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. Uh, should probably be in the set map function. Mancarelli's stubbed function is going to waste. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yes, you're right. <laughs> I should be using that. That's fair. Um, I honestly didn't really look at this code. Okay, so Min is now streaming. So let me pop over to here and pop it out. And let's snap it up here. Okay, so oh, you already downloaded it? Ah. 
Well, that was fast. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what he did on his end, because I pushed it. So I do a push, and then he does a pull, and now he has the copy of the code. Okay. And so he's going to be moving uh, that code around or something. So the print map function, yeah, is like that. that yeah, yeah, perfect. And then he's going to just delete that stuff down there. And that's that's basically it. So the only the only other tricky part is like if I were to start messing with it now, and I'm editing it and he's editing it at the same time, you're gonna get a merge conflict. And uh, the best and sometimes when you go onto and you can go onto the website and like look at the the merge conflict and sometimes you can click like just use Mincarelli's code, just use my code, or like automatically resolve it. If not, you have to like be like okay, we're gonna take his this and my this and hit, you know. And, and, and it gets it gets uh, annoying. That should be back. Yeah. And then that should be fine. That should be fine. No, 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 no. no that that was that was road. That should be road. That should, the, the second one should be that. No, 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 no. Don't change it. Don't change it. No, no, no. Yep. Good, good, good. Yeah. And this is this is how you also could be coding. You also could be coding by just having one person typing, and then everybody else on voice chat just watching the person be like, no, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> and that's a perfectly valid way of doing uh, collaborative coding too. For one person has the text editor open and you just have multiple people looking at it, uh, writing code essentially collaboratively this way. And so we're looking at the thing. Uh, okay, open it up again. Line 23. Vim main.cc plus 23. Takes you to line 23 in Vim for every... Oh, you made it const. Yeah, that one should be const. Yeah, very good. Uh, open it up again. I think there's a const on. No. Maybe when I wrote it last time, I wrote a const. Uh, Line 20, it says it's on. Line 14. So it's up there. Okay. Uh, oh, right, you're right, because you're, you're getting it by reference. So, uh, yeah, yeah, go down. Uh, just make it char. Don't make it char by reference. Yeah, very good. That should work. Cool. And then run it. There we go. Okay, so he's refactored my code. One last time for the uh, people at home, get add main.cc, boom, get commit. And you can add multiple files, right? Like if you're working on multiple files at one time, you can add multiple files to be staged basically for being uploaded. Move code in main. So he's gonna give a nice description. And then, so he does the get add, get commit, get push. And he types in his username and password again. Notice his isn't preserving the uh, authentication stuff. Mine is set up to do so. Authentication fail. <laughs> so he's gonna go try and find his personal access token again. Yeah, it's it's I like it's arguably more secure because you can you can grant partial permissions on things. So you're not just like logging in with your complete account. But like you can grant people just some permission and not all permission. So they're actually a good idea. The trouble is, is that the things are so long, you can't memorize them. And so you have to write them down somewhere. And so that creates a, in my opinion, pretty vulnerable, you know, method of attack, right? Because all you have to do is like go on to, you know, my notepad and like, like oh, there's his personal access token. Right. So. so he's pushed it. All right. So go ahead and stop watching. And then I'm going to do one last time, git pull, and if I edit main.cc, voila, there's the code. You guys see that? Push, pull, push, pull. Okay. As long as, you know, two people aren't working on the same code at the same time, it works pretty well. Uh, the, other, the other big limitation for GitHub is working with large uh, binary files. 
So if you're working with like um, movies, uh, 3D models, textures, materials, things like that, things that we do in game development all the time, uh, GitHub chokes and dies on it. Like it, it really does. It's <laughs> it, it is just designed for source code. If you if you're trying to do version control for like your art and stuff like that, there's something called Git LFS, uh, which um, sort of is a weird hack that makes it work for art and things like that. But um, by default, Git only really works with source code. That's really what it's there for. And you usually don't upload your executables. Like you don't upload like a dot out because like if I push a dot out and then somebody downloads it like onto their Windows machine, it's not helpful, right? But they could download the source code, right? Because all the C plus plus we wrote here, it's all cross platform. Everything there's nothing in here that refers to uh, Unix or Windows or Apple or anything like that. All this stuff will work just fine on any of the three big operating systems, no problem. And so typically, when you share your code with people, you just give them the source code and directions on how to build it. So you'd say like, you know, compile G++ main.cc, you know, in the readme.md. Okay. Being a backseat gamer. Yeah, being a back, I mean, it's fine. Like it's it's honestly like, it's not a bad coding technique to just have one person coding and all of the partners just watching, okay? that That's actually a surprisingly effective method of doing group group coding. Just set up, a, set up a, a video conference, you know, voice chat, however you wanna do it. And um, just have one person coding and everyone watching and then maybe when they're done, they push it up on GitHub and then everybody else pulls onto their account and then they can like look at it on their own time. And if there's something they want to work on when nobody else is working on it, you can throw it up into the GitHub and uh, like he, he has a typo here or something. Yeah. And um, then I can I can push it when people aren't working on it. All right. So that is that is GitHub in basically, um, I don't know, half an hour or so. That's, you know. I don't want to say that's all there is to it because there's a lot more to it and it's um, it's actually big and complicated and the number of ways you can shoot yourself in the foot is uh, 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 like basically every large organization I know that uses Git um, has completely screwed themselves up <laughs> at, at, at some point or another and have had to like just completely like trash a repository and start from scratch. And so that's why I said it preserves all of your history until it, it doesn't. You know, so um, like they've like, I, I don't even know how, like I've heard some stories from my friends at Microsoft and things like that. It's just like, I don't even know how it gets screwed up that bad. And and these are people that are like GitHub, like gurus. And they're just like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, it's, it's broken. I don't know. So um, what was your username be? Oh yeah, yeah. The first time you run GitHub, you will see this message when you try doing a commit. And so you need to run these two commands one time. Right, so the first time, again, uh, let's recap from the start. Step one, create an account on GitHub. Step two, create a repository. Step three, I guess run these commands. These are all one-time things, okay? So you just type in your username for GitHub, you type in your name, and then you don't have to run the server again. And then uh, you're gonna clone the repository. So these are all one-time steps. You're gonna git clone the, the repo, and the repo is uh, you can get the repository by clicking on the code tab, clicking on that, clicking copy. And then you're going to type git clone that. And you do that once. I'm not doing it again because I've already got it. Okay, don't keep doing that over and over again. You'll cause yourself endless brain aneurysms. Okay, you do that once. These are things you do once. You create an account once. You create a repository once. You. <laughs> You type, uh, you know, get config once and you clone the repository once ever, maybe like per homework assignment, but like you don't do this like repeatedly. Your workflow is going to be edit the code, hold up one more time, uh, edit the code, get add, get commit, get push, everyone else does get pull. And you just repeat this in a loop. This is your cycle. This is your work cycle. And then GitHub tracks all the changes over time. If I were to come over to the repo over here, we can look at the history of main.cc. So there's our current version, but if we go over to history, uh, we can see all the changes that it made and I can click on that and see this was added, uh, this was subtracted, this was added, right? And then I can go to the next one. Uh, where is it? Uh, 
go to the next one. You can see he took these out, put these in. Okay. So like every change you make ever is going to be tracked in the repository. Okay. And so if you ever screw something up, you can just revert back to the old one. It's really nice for those of you that have accidentally erased your homework assignments uh, an hour before the deadline. Well, if you, you can just use GitHub for yourself, by yourself, like that's completely acceptable. You don't need to use GitHub only in, um, you know, a multi-user environment. You can, you're more than welcome to use GitHub just when it's you and you, right? Because every time you do a git push, um, it's storing a new version of your code on GitHub uh, forever. And so if you ever screw something up, if you ever delete something, you can always go backwards in time and restore it. Okay, so yeah, I, I don't wanna say that's all there is to get. There's a lot more like how do you branch and, and do pull requests and this kind of stuff. But for this assignment, that's all you need to know, okay? Um, yeah, and then like where the head is and all this other stuff, like there, there's a lot, a lot to it. And like, it's the kind of thing that like, you probably actually want to spend some time learning because this is industry standard. You need to know it if you're gonna be working in industry. Um, when you apply for a job, they're, they're gonna wanna see your GitHub and all the repos on it. And if you just have a good set of like school projects and things like that that you can show to people, it looks really nice. It's nice having a nice full, uh, you know, account with all these repositories and people can click on it and see what kind of code you write and stuff like that. That's how you get jobs. And it shows you also now how to use GitHub, which is again, required by basically everybody these days. It's industry standard. Okay. So I'm going to stop this lecture here and then I'm going to start up a new lecture in a second on 2d arrays. All right.